The year was 1980. In the wake of the Vietnam War, hundreds of thousands of South Vietnamese fled their homeland, setting out in overcrowded and inadequate boats in the South China Sea, vulnerable to pirates and to storms. A third of them drowned. Among those determined to help the refugees caught up in these dramatic events was Pedro Arupe, Superior General of the Jesuits, an international Roman Catholic order of priests and brothers. This was not the first time Father Arupe had found himself responding to a crisis. On August 6, 1945, he was living in Hiroshima when the first atomic bomb flattened the city. As a survivor, he put to use skills that he had learned years before in medical school to nurse burn victims fleeing the devastation. So when Vietnamese boat people who survived the South China Sea began to gather in refugee camps in countries that would accept them, Arupe acted. He gave a talk in 1981. It happened to be August the 6th, which is the Feast of the Transfiguration, but it's also Hiroshima Day. And he said, this is like Hiroshima. And he was moved by it. He wrote to maybe 50 provinces, you know, units of the Jesuits around the world. He was overwhelmed with the response he got. Arupe recognized that Jesuits, then numbering more than 27,000 around the world, were uniquely positioned to coordinate humanitarian responses on a global scale. The Jesuit Refugee Service was born. Although Jesuit Refugee Service began as a response to the critical needs of Vietnamese boat people, it soon rose to meet the challenge of aiding other refugees as well. Within a few years, JRS blossomed from a short-term ministry to a permanent institution. Father Rupe thought it's just an involvement of a couple of years. It was thought the boat people crisis might be over in a couple of years and that's it. But unfortunately, the demands have grown. JRS grew, took on more structure, and developed into a well-known and recognized international organization. From the very beginning, the key question was whom to serve, since it is impossible to meet every crisis. One criteria was where there is the greater need. The poorer refugees, people on the frontiers, people on the borders. Among the refugees, the more vulnerable. And another criteria is where others don't go. In those places where JRS did go, they soon developed a set of guiding principles. They set a high priority on accompaniment, being with the people first of all. You know, the refugee doesn't leave home in order to get a shirt or food. This, they, they left behind the spirits of their ancestors, they left behind their parents, they left behind their whole life. So, what they want is someone who understands that. The hinge of our way of trying to do that is the accompaniment. To be first close to refugees, face to face, to be touched by their reality, the compassion. Service is another priority, with services rendered without discrimination on the basis of religious belief. And here the Jesuits can play to their traditional strength by emphasizing education, important for refugees who languish in camps for long periods. In providing services, JRS relies on the refugees themselves. Yeah, the majority of our collaborators are refugees. And they are the ones to, who make a big difference because they know what they've gone through, what the needs are, but we have also quite a number of volunteers, international volunteers. 
A third priority for JRS is advocacy, providing a voice for refugees and displaced persons to the governments and institutions that control their lives. It's because if people have no hope, it is um, it's very difficult. Um, and that is something one of our mandates is to keep hope alive. Conflicts are a spiritual problem. That's about hatred. So that the refugees don't become the next ones to, 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 to continue the circle of violence, I do think we have a, a privileged role to help them to find peaceful solutions. And that's where I also would like to see JRS, together with others, helping people in, in reconciliation, forgiveness, in finding long-term peaceful solutions. But refugees who have nothing, have lost everything, they cannot afford to lose their hope. The intuition that inspired Father Arupe to launch Jesuit Refugee Service in 1980 was praised and underscored by Pope Benedict XVI when the Jesuits met in 2008 to elect a new general, Father Adolfo Nicolás. Cari padre della Congregazione Generale della Compagnia di Gesù, raccogliendo e sviluppando una delle ultime lungimiranti intuizioni del padre Arupe, la vostra compagnia continua a impegnarsi in modo meritorio nel servizio per i rifugiati on that occasion, the Holy Father encouraged the Jesuits to continue and renew the work JRS does among and for the poorest of the poor. Che più propria del vostro servizio. After nearly 30 years of commitment, Jesuit Refugee Service continues to move into the frontiers where forcibly displaced persons live at the edge of humanity, as Father Nicolas says. Here, JRS, together with the refugees, engages in a shared mission of reconciliation, accompanying, serving, and advocating. <laughs>